Welcome back to Smoky Ribs. Today I'm firing up the pit barrel cooker once again. We're gonna be doing an awesome chicken recipe. This chicken recipe comes from Hawaii and it's called Huli Huli Chicken. Let's get busy. If you wanna cook backyard barbecue till you get your feel, you come to the right place. Rubs John Smoky Ribs. Smoky Ribs. Alright, I've got about a five pound chicken here. And what I'm going to do is remove the neck and uh, the innards that they normally pack inside of this chicken. Get all this out of the way, make sure it's good and clear first. Basically, we're gonna cut this in half. I'm going to take my poultry shears and I'm going to follow this backbone all the way down. All right, there's one half. All right now the other side. All right, all right. I've got my backbone removed. You can save this, make your chicken stock with it or whatever. All right. So now what we want to do? I'm gonna make a small incision right here. Kind of pop this open. Now I'm just gonna take this meat cleaver. And I'm simply just going to cut this in half. All right, there's our two halves. All right, now I'm going to take these over here and rinse them off really good, give them a good washing. We'll be back in a few minutes to put a rub together and get these chickens rubbed down. So let's put our rub together. We're going to start off with one and a half tablespoons of paprika. I've got one and a half tablespoon. This is a black lava Hawaiian sea salt. All right, you don't have to use this. I had some on hand, so I'm using it since uh, it's a Hawaiian dish. You can use regular table salt or kosher salt. Okay, this here is two tablespoons of garlic powder, one tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of cayenne pepper, one teaspoon of cumin, and that's it. Give this a good mix. I did forget one ingredient and it was sitting right in front of me, and that would be cracked black pepper. I'm gonna go in with probably about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. All right, looks like we got a good mix on this. I would say we're ready to put some rub on this chicken. All right, we're just gonna give this a good coating all around it. It's a really good smelling rub. Gonna flip them over, make sure we get the inside. All right, I've got really good coverage on both of these chicken halves here. I'm gonna go ahead and do my hook placement. And where you wanna go in at is right here in this breastplate. Just like that. It is some kind of hot in South Mississippi and I'm fixing to heat things up a little bit more. We're going in with the original Kingsford blue and white charcoal briquettes. Just want to level this basket off. Now you want to remove about one fourth of these briquettes and we're going to light them separately. Now place the charcoal basket into the bottom of the pit brow cooker. Put our little chimney starter in here. Newspaper under the bottom. Light it up. All right, our charcoal is lit. From here, you want to take the charcoal, remove the grate, dump this on your other charcoal. All right, now we're placing the rebar back into their holes. This is very key and very critical for proper ventilation on this pit barrel smoker. Put your lid on. We're gonna let this go around 20 minutes to get up to temp. Let the other charcoal get lit and we should be able to hang some chicken at that time. All right, at the end of 20 minutes, I'm gonna be adding some smoke wood to this. Over in Hawaii, they use a KOA wood, which I can't get, not around here. I might could order it, I haven't really looked, but uh, wood that is very, very similar in taste is mesquite, and so that's what we're going with. Over in Hawaii, they, they have these big, huge rigs like on a trailer. They're like flat, flat beds with rotisseries all the way down them. Looks to me like these things will hold 100 and 150 chickens, whole chickens, and they got them spinning, they're cooking them with that KOA wood. So uh, 
I've read that the mesquite is very, very similar. So with that said, at the end of 20 minutes, that's what I'll be uh, adding to this charcoal. Now this chicken weighed in at five pounds, just a little over. So this is gonna take around two hours. But before the full two hours is up, I will be saucing these with a huli huli sauce, of which I'm gonna show you how to make that in a few minutes. All right, we're gonna start this huli huli sauce going in with one full cup of pineapple juice, one half cup ketchup, one half cup soy sauce, going in with two tablespoons of rice vinegar, got about a tablespoon fresh minced garlic, one about two teaspoons of fresh ginger. All right, this has been simmering for around 12 minutes. It has reduced and you can tell that it's beginning to thicken just by the appearance of the bubbles here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the fire off. This will continue to thicken as it cools. All right, I've had the chicken on the pit barrel cooker for a total of an hour and a half. I find it easier for me just to go out there and get it, bring it in here, sauce up, then bring it back out and hang it up because otherwise I'm gonna have to set a table up out there and it's just more trouble than what it's worth. It won't take me, but a few minutes is right outside the front door here and I'll be back and show you what it looks like. We're gonna sauce it up. All right, I just removed these and they do have a beautiful color. But right, I'm gonna go ahead and get both halves done, inside and out, and I'm gonna return this back to the pit barrel cooker for another 15, possibly 20 minutes. It's looking really good. I'd like to see a little bit of char on this, not much. It's really got a beautiful color as it is. So basically what I've done is I went out there, grabbed the chicken, brought it in here twice, and I basted it, okay? I went 15 minutes after that first baste, and that second baste, I went more like 20, 25. I was trying to get a little bit of char on there, not a lot, just, just a little bit for color, and that added flavor. I've got it in here, we're getting ready to cut into it and see how we look. All right, so the first thing I need to do is remove these hooks out of the chicken. Ooh, that hula hula is sticky, and I like sticky. All right, normally, to tell how you did on chicken, as you cut into the chicken breast, that's going to give you a good indication as to how juicy this bird is going to be. That's exactly what we're getting ready to do. Let's pull this wing up. Take us a slice right here. Oh, it's cutting. Oh, it's cutting very good. Oh, yes, sir. I don't know if you can see the moisture in that. It's just loaded down with moisture. Mmm. 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 Mmm incredible flavor this is extremely moist so if I can push in on it and you can see what I'm talking about you see that moisture oh yeah there we go that's what we're looking like all right you see just how juicy that breast meat is, and that is the hardest part on a chicken to stop from drying out. That is the first part to dry out, above all. This turned out phenomenal. Now with that said, huli huli chicken typically is uh, put through a brine, a brining process for three, four hours, sometimes overnight, which pretty much ensures that it's gonna be juicy. And a lot of that has to do with the way they cook it on that rotisserie over there in Hawaii. Now, I did this purposely. I purposely did not do a brine because of the pit barrel cooker. I wanted to see just how juicy it would turn out without a brine, and I was absolutely floored once again. All right, I'm gonna take and cut a piece of my favorite meat, which is a dark, dark meat. Let me uh, try a piece of this thigh here. Here we go. Mmm, 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 mmm. I kid you not, these flavors are outstanding. Man, this stuff is delicious beautiful results. I hope you give this a try. Until next time, Smokey Ribs.